I'm sure many of you have seen this now in the news the last few days. Um, there was a horrendous shooting at a church in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, some lunatic went in there and he uh, worshipped with everybody else for about an hour and then pulled out his gun to start shooting people. Nine people dead. Tragic, tragic story. But it's interesting from a UK perspective because obviously people in the UK would immediately be like, you know, blaming the NRA, they'd be blaming guns and saying, oh, they should ban guns and all that sort of rubbish. But yet you're not hearing this from the left in the United States. You're actually hearing a bit of nuance. You're hearing people talking about the genuine motivations behind this, which is interesting. But I can tell you why. The reason why is because he didn't use an AR-15 or an AK-47 or whatever else. Something, incidentally, which he, if he had used, you know, people would have known about that before he even entered the building, because they'd have gone, oh, Christ, there's a bloke with a big massive rifle walking in. But no, he, he had, from what I can gather, a Glock of some sort, I think it was a 45 ACP, that he bought legitimately, passing all the background checks that people like Barack Obama go on about. Um, you know, in the past he's spoken about trying to implement some sort of background check system for private sales of firearms, which is ridiculous because nobody knows that those transactions are going on. But he passed all that and he still got a gun anyway. And that's why people aren't talking about the gun. They're also talking about a handgun. Now, if you're in the UK, you might not understand why that's relevant, but in the United States, even people on the left generally support the private ownership of pistols for self-defence. Even, you know, left-wing commentators like Bill Maher or John Stewart have handguns in their home to protect their family. So, because it's not a big black rifle, they're suddenly all quiet about the issue, aren't they? Except for Barack Obama, I've noticed that he's had a tendency to do this recently. But as soon as this, this thing happened, before we knew the details, what, what actually went on, he already said, oh, this is basically our stupid gun laws. Not knowing yet even what gun he used or what, what, why it happened or, or anything else. And he did this before recently, where there was a, a, a policeman shooting some black guy. And obviously a terrible story, and I'm not going to comment on the ins and outs of it, but immediately he labels it as a racist issue before he even knows the facts of the case. I personally think that's very irresponsible for somebody who's supposed to be the President of the United States to be making comments like that without even knowing what's happened yet. But I digress. What's happened here is because it was just a handgun, they're all of a sudden thinking, well, okay, what's going on? Well, this is a church in Charleston, South Carolina, okay? There's a huge problem with racism in, in South Carolina, apparently. They have streets named after the Confederacy, conf sorry, Confederate generals who fought to try and prevent black people having rights, preventing them from having churches. That church itself, historically, has been attacked on numerous occasions by people like the Ku Klux Klan and various sort of far-right um, people who didn't like black people worshipping. These are the sorts of, this is the sort of general background of what's gone on here. But then, of course, the guy himself, we don't know a lot about yet. I'm sure we will, um, but he's, you know, apparently bought this gun over the counter in the regular legitimate way, and, uh, yeah, pulled his gun out and shot loads of people. But, of course, it'd be interesting to see what drugs he was on. Because, again, you never hear this from the left in the States. You certainly won't hear this from Barack Obama, probably because of all the kickbacks he's getting from Big Pharma. But Big Pharma in the States, I don't know how many of you in the UK have visited the United States and seen the advertising you get for drugs on the television, but it's quite shocking. I thought it was when I went to New York about 10 years ago. You know, they will have advert after advert after advert for drugs to fix problems like you're a little tired in the morning, or, I don't know, whatever it is. Stuff that you just deal with. If you know, if I felt a bit tired in the morning, I'll go to bed a bit early the next day. But apparently, not according to Big Pharma, apparently I should take some little pill which will have a list of side effects about this long, with, which are often horrendous. I mean, this would be completely illegal in any country in Europe, but in the States, it's considered to be normal, apparently. And the one thing these mass shooters all tend to have in common is they're usually on pharmaceutical prescribed medicine, which they really shouldn't have had any business being on in the first place. These are the sorts of things that need to be spoken about. Like I said, racism, drugs, the, the, the general background that caused this to happen. The tool, well, whatever. I mean, okay, he used a handgun. Could have used a rifle. Could have used a bomb. Could have used a knife. It's not like these guys are shooting back at him. When you hear people like, um, you know, uh, like, yeah, I said, like Bill Maher and, and, and people like that, um, you know, they'll be like, oh, you know, you've got this, this black rifle and it can shoot. 30 rounds and no time at all, and it's like, yeah, but 
These people aren't shooting back, are they? If the guy could have used a side-by-side -side shotgun and reloaded as many times as he likes, these people have just been cowering, going, please don't shoot me. I mean, it's not really relevant what gun he used, is it? And the gun itself, the, the possession of a gun generally, it's not really relevant either, because America has, you know, five, something like 500 million firearms in circulation for a population of about 350 million. They're not going anywhere. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't just suddenly think, oh, I'll bring in a law and ban something, and it'll disappear. I mean, you know, it's funny that the left always do this, because they wouldn't use this argument for drugs, would they? You know, most people on the left, in the United States, and, you know, and this country and many others, would argue, and I would tend to agree, actually, that the, that the war on drugs doesn't work. That, you know, if you ban drugs, people are still going to have drugs. It's not going to make any difference. And it's exactly the same with guns, especially in the United States, because there are so many in circulation, they're everywhere. You, you know, banning a gun isn't going to stop guns being available, is it? So we need to look at why they did this. When the Boston bomber bombed the marathon in Boston, nobody was talking about the fertiliser access he had to make a bomb, were they? Nobody would even think about that. And bearing in mind, in the UK, even today, despite guns being so restricted, you can buy the ingredients to make a very, very dangerous bomb, legally and legitimately, can't you? But nobody would talk about banning that, because it's just, it would be mindless, it would be ridiculous, you, could, you couldn't police it. So, it's much more important to look at why people do something in the first place. And that's one thing that is slightly encouraging to come out of all this, because at least people are looking at that as being a reason. It's just a pity it takes the fact that somebody, you know, what type of gun he used is what it takes to make people look at this in a, with a bit more nuance. And I think the media have a bit of responsibility here too, because they put these people on a pedestal. They have all this coverage of them, of their lives, what they, what, you know, everything that happened to them, and it encourages people to do these mass shootings again. That's what they want. Most of them kill themselves at the end, because they want to have their name written in history. They want to be famous. Well, stop giving them that. Stop offering them that chance to be famous. Stop motivating them to commit a mass shooting. You don't hear the media particularly coverage, covering, you know, these, these wonderful people who were worshipping, who even after something so terrible happening to them, they're immediately standing around saying, we forgive the shooter, we don't see the point in any hate, we've been hated for so long that we've learned that there is no point in hating anyone. And I agree with that, and that's such a wonderful sentiment. Why isn't that being seized upon? Stop giving the, the, the sort of fame to these, to these criminals and motivating them to do it again. And stop having this silly tilly-tally about banning guns, which we know in the United States is completely irrelevant. It's largely irrelevant in the UK as well. I mean, we had a similar thing with Raoul Moat in like 2010. Because guns are so restricted already, there's nowhere the left can really go with that. So they just don't mention it. But they should at least acknowledge that it didn't make any difference. All these regulations in the past made no difference. It's still going to happen. And if guns were just gone, would they, they just use a bomb or whatever else? We need to stop looking at things in such a simplistic, stupid way. And start looking at why people do things. And trying to find a way of stopping that. Stopping racism. Stopping people having access to, to, to prescribed medicine that they shouldn't be on in the first place. You know? That's the sort of thing that should be looked at, in my opinion, and I'm sure you've got yours. Now, I haven't seen many people talking about this on YouTube yet, so I'd like you to give me some feedback. I want to hear your um, comments on this and what your opinions are on the story. Anything that's relevant, I'll put in the uh, description. So let me know what you think. Either way, I hope you enjoyed that. Like and subscribe.